the last couple of months now say they're going to pull out of the province because of some of the changes that the government has made. Are you concerned about it? And I guess what is the signal that it's sending to you? Well, look, we, we have to get affordable insurance. There are some small players who, because we put in a requirement that they cannot increase rates by more than inflation for good drivers, made the determination that they couldn't stay. And uh, we're, we're expecting that there's going to be some other changes that have to come in. Our number one goal is to make sure people have affordable insurance. That is going to require the, the companies to uh, assess the, the new realities in our marketplace. We're doing a cons uh, consultation right now. But our, our number one goal is to make sure that we do not have the highest insurance rates in the country. The Ernst & Young report said that no matter what car you drive, what kind of driver you are, that uh, our rates are higher. There's a problem with that. We've got to solve it. Just a, a separate issue, but Minister Wilkinson said last week that he thinks in order to get the Pathways Project built, that it's going to be up to your government to increase the grants that they give to Pathways to get that project done. Well, look, I mean, we have the same... Let's be, let's be fair. I mean, we have the lowest corporate income tax rate in the country by a country mile, 30% lower than the next lowest province. We're lower as well than the combined U.S. state rates of 44 different U.S. jurisdictions. And that's part of our contribution. Um, and so uh, when, it, when you look at who takes the lion's share of corporate taxes, it's the federal government. So that's why they should uh, shoulder a, a higher amount. We've come to the table with the same tax credit that we've given on the Alberta Petrochemical Incentive Program, which has spurred $39 billion worth of expressions of interest. The 12% uh, uh, similar tax credit for CCUS has resulted in others who are announcing. And so we think it's, uh, it's going to be sufficient to be able to stimulate that kind of investment. So, you know, continue, of course, to work with our federal counterparts um, and uh, and to work with Pathways. But but we think that the proposal we have is very generous. So you think it's Ottawa that should increase? It's, we, we do believe. I mean, Ottawa made the, uh, the the proposal on contract for differences. We do think that that is, is Ottawa's obligation to be able to meet. And uh, they've given a very generous tax credit. We're grateful for that. Well, look, I mean, any time he's come, it's always been a surprise. So I don't know if he's intending, I don't know what his schedule is, I know he's in NATO this week, but... I am grateful that uh, I think almost all of my MLAs managed to make it here from all corners of the province. That shows their, the priority we place on it as a, a caucus and cabinet. We've got U.S. representatives who are coming here to take part and do business. And so I, you know, I would hope anybody who wants to do business here would realize that this is not only just a party. It is a it is a way to be able to connect with people. I was very pleased to see that uh, Nova Scotia Premier Tim Houston was here. He's hosting us all at the Council of the Federation next week, and he made some time to come out. So I. I'm just grateful for the folks who did show up. Yeah. You know, I'll have to follow up with you on that because uh, we have, we've had some very constructive conversations with the federal housing minister on uh, trying to uh, access housing accelerator funds for the municipalities that were excluded. They did, I think, about eight bilateral deals, but of course we've got 325 municipalities that all have pressures in their communities. So maybe we'll get Sam to follow up with you, in particular to find out what the delay is on that particular fund. And Jonathan, and then we'll go to Hey, Jonathan. Can you come a little closer? I can't hear you. Well, what I love so much about Stampede and Rodeo is it's such an expression of who we are as Albertans. When you when you look at what uh, some of those rodeo cowboys take on, the risk taking, that real sense of freedom, that true grit. That that to me is why I think we embrace. Uh, stampede so much it's also we all even though we all dress like this uh, for fun it also is a, a way to pay homage to our food producers our farmers and ranchers who not only feed us every day but also who built this province so I, I think that's part of the reason why everybody gets into the spirit because it really is a nod to our heritage that's one part of it but it's also a great time to do business I mean there are uh, countless events that are happening 
I remember there was a, a time a few years ago when things weren't so good in the economy that everybody was scaling back their parties, and I still feel that this year. I feel like there's more parties going on from all of the different uh, groups out there than, than I've ever seen before. So I think that, that people are really embracing the, the fact that you can do business and also have some, a good time. Yeah. You know, I just feel like uh, we got our groove back, really. I mean, when you think about how hard it was in this province from about 2014 until around 2022 when all of the restrictions lifted, that we were the first to really get out of the gate and say, okay, let's get back to business. And I think last summer we were still just uh, gearing up. And by this summer, I mean, we've had 200,000 people who moved to our province last year from uh, not only across the country, but from around the world. It's a place to be, and, and people see it. So I, I really feel that sense of optimism. Perfect. And a little in the back, you want to show? Well, look, I'm not going to cut my source of revenue so the federal government can take more from Alberta. I have a a mandate from Albertans to stop the federal government from taking money out of this province. And I think the federal government should cut their carbon tax, 17 cents on the carbon tax, another 10 cents on their fuel tax. Then they charge tax on tax for GST. They're taking 35 cents and Albertans aren't getting new roads built for that money. The money that we uh, use to build uh, for, from the carbon tax, we use to build roads. It's part of the reason we put in a $200 electric vehicle tax, tax because electric vehicles use roads too and we think it should be fair. So I I think the federal government should be the ones to cut their tax, and I support the Axe the Tax initiative that the, the federal conservative uh, leader Pierre Polyev has been asking for for over a year, and I think most uh, most Canadians do too. Uh, a lot of people are, are just happy, enjoying enjoying the beautiful weather, enjoying the stampede, having a, a great time, saying that we're doing a good job. And I think that what they're seeing is that we have prioritized having good paying jobs, investing in the economy, economy making sure that, that people are employed, because that's the best way for people to take care of themselves. And with those dollars, we know that we'll be able to pay for the priorities that Albertans care about, health care and education, but taking care of our most vulnerable and, and building. One of the things we know we need to do is with the number of new families that have come here, there's a lot more kids that have come here, we need to prioritize getting portables out and building schools and making sure that we uh, address the funding so that we can keep up with that level of growth. So those are those will be our priorities over the, over the coming weeks and months. Thank you. We have time for two more questions. So come to City Hughes here first, and then one more here. Yeah. Let, let's be clear, we're not cancelling Alberta's plan. Alberta's had a plan since 1973. We have 500,000 people on that plan. The federal plan doesn't cover seven different groups that we already cover, our most vulnerable citizens. And it's outrageous to me that they would come in and not integrate with a system that we already have that's been working for decades. So we're going to, we indicate it to them over the next two years, we want to negotiate that they will transfer money for, to us so that we can continue to expand our program so we can meet our joint obligations. We have a, a system, I mean, the Canada Health Act says single payer administrator so that we don't double up on administrative costs. Why in the world would they come in and double up on administrative costs, spend all that money on bureaucracy when we have a program here that works and we're just not going to do that. We want the money to go to the front line and we want the money to go to actual treatment of, of, of Albertans and that's not what's going to happen if you double up on the administration. Yeah, and last question, we're going here. Alberta municipalities and RMA had concern over the spring session of around 18, 20, yeah. 21. Now I know you met with Tyler Gandon, president yeah. of Alberta municipalities, and Paul McLaughlin, president of RMA. Can you just describe that relationship that you're hoping to foster going forward? Yeah. Because I know that Tyler said that you're hoping to have recurring meetings with yeah. Alberta municipalities. But from your perspective, what's your relationship like with municipalities? Look, we, we love the work our municipalities do. And I, I think one of the things that I explained to them is that uh, the municipal government Act is a big piece of legislation and you don't want to open it up and, and be modifying it every single session. So things build up that we identify as problems and then we, we fix them all at once. And so I think perhaps uh, what we agreed to next time is that when we introduce a bill, we'll make sure they're there at the bill briefing. If there's any concerns, they'll arrange webinars with their members so that we can walk through some of the rationale for the decisions. I think there was a lot of misunderstanding about why we were doing some of the things we were doing. 
uh, most of it was because people were asking us to. Um, and so we'll, we'll do a, bit, a better job communicating that out next time. But we've got a really great relationship with the municipalities.